Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Exploring the Paranormal. Today is an exciting day. Um, of course, it's a little chilly, so I'm kind of bundled up, but I can't complain because Florida chili is a lot different than some of the northern chilies. So, but I hope you guys are all staying warm and having a great day and getting ready for the busy holiday season if you are not busy already. Just a quick reminder, today is our last show of 2023. We will return um, on the first Tuesday of January with special guest Resnick will be joining us. He's a return guest. You guys all love him. So make sure you join in on that one. More details will be posted as we get closer to that date for you all. And don't forget, you can always catch this show live on the Things Network, Parallax TV, or of course, on my Facebook page, um, Exploring the Paranormal Show. And then within 24 to 48 hours, I do get it uploaded onto YouTube for you guys to catch the replays there. And that is at Heather Lee PhD on YouTube. Today's guest, I'm super excited to have her here. I know I've tried to have her in the past when I was on WLTK, but schedules changed and shows got canceled. So we weren't able to do that. So I'm going to bring her on board right now. So that way you guys can all get to see her. I'm super excited. Today is going to be a fun conversation. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Heather. It's nice. It's really nice to be on your show finally. Oh, thank, thank you, you so me. much. <laughs> so, and I was so bummed. I was like, oh no, I had to <laughs> when we had to cancel and all the show changes. But yes, I'm glad everything worked out and that you are finally here. And we still need to set a time to talk outside of the show because we've been meaning to do that for a while as well. Yes, we do. And you need to be a guest on my show. Yes, definitely. We will make sure we get that set up and I'll make sure I let everybody know when that'll happen so they can check it out. And after today's show, I will also be sharing different links on where they can find your show. And we'll talk about that towards the end so everyone knows where to find you. But before we get started, can you kind of talk a little bit more about who you are and let some of my followers know exactly what they can expect to talk about today? So who I am? Gosh, that sounds like an interview question. <laughs> It's kind of complicated. Do you mean in paranormal? So what I, I know you're an author as well. So I want to dive into nice. that a little bit as well. So I, I guess um, it's one of those things where it's weird because most of my guests are paranormal investigators and not many of them have multiple hats that they wear. Oh, got it. <laughs> so. Okay. You want to know the real me. <laughs> no, if you don't mind sharing, if not, you could talk about what got you into the paranormal field. Um, like I mentioned before we went live, we basically talk about anything and, you know, kind of see where the conversation takes us. So I am an artist. I'm a writer and I started out in photojournalism a very long time ago. Um, I was one of those kids. I wrote my, my first book when I was in sixth grade and it was a children's book. You know, it wasn't any good or anything, but all the kids in the class loved to read it and they passed it on and that sort of thing it was kind of interesting. Um, but then by the time I got into high school, I was to high school photographer and artist and I was always the go-to person if anything needed printed or painted or whatever it was and it it kind of just grew from there so now I have a lifelong career pretty much in writing and in arts and things like that um I do a lot of uh, public relations right now so that's what I do in my full time I would have a couple of uh, really big clients that I can't disclose but they're pretty big. They keep me busy. I, tr I travel all over the country, taking care of them and doing a lot of media stuff for them. So that's and, me how, and how does that tie into the paranormal field? So kind of what kind of got you started into the paranormal and basically how your experience and what you've been doing benefits that field benefits your experiences in the field. So the paranormal, it's interesting because I try to keep that separate from my real life. Like I don't mention it in my real life. I use a pen name. C.L. Thomas is a pen name. Um, and it's, it's because I have a lot of one of the fields I work in, uh, for instance, country music is very close knit and they're also very Christian. So you're expected to be a certain way. So I, I definitely don't cross those lines. Some of the people I work with are political as well. So I'm pretty careful about that. But the paranormal, um, it kind of found me. So when I was two years old, two, three years old, I was seeing ghosts and I, I grew up with it. It's been a lifelong uh, spiritual journey for me. And when it comes to your writing, like your books and everything like that, do you get your in, in, you know inspiration from your personal experiences or is it based off of research that you've done or a combination of both maybe? 
it's it's a combination of both. So two books now. All the all the um, historical fiction are from spirits that I have actually contacted mm-hmm. in some way or form, and it kind of influenced me writing the book. For instance, um, speaking of shadows is about it's about a, it's a conglomeration of several legends in New Orleans, outside of New Orleans River. I think it's River Road. Mm-hmm. Along the Mississippi, there's a bunch of sugar plantations. And so um, one of those plantations I actually got to stay because I was working on a documentary at the time. And I stayed in what used to be their slave quarters. Now it's like a little bed and breakfast that you can stay in. It's really cute, but it's actually really haunted. Um, I contacted a female spirit while I stayed there, and it just influenced this entire story. I started doing some research and found out that in that general area, there was several legends regarding a voodoo queen and just several things. And so I just kind of put them all into one and created that story. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of aspects are true. A lot of it's false. There's another one I'm working on and I don't want to give too many details away on it, but I just started it and it, it, the setting is in Goldfield and long story short, I was there for a weekend um, just filming on a different project. It was a historical project I was working on and I was in the cemetery and I saw this, this spirit from all the way across the cemetery. And I ran over there and just to see um, if I could connect with her or anything like that. And it was this young girl. I only saw her for just a few seconds, but she caught my attention. And it was like, she was just overshadowing me when I was in that cemetery and long story short, she ends up being a suicide. She's not buried under the correct name. There's like this whole story behind her. So I'm working on putting together her life. And of course it's historical fiction because I can't not, it's not going to be a hundred percent. There's just no way to put those kind of records. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the, the stories I could tell you about the Goldfield cemetery and Goldfield itself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to hear them. Right, I'll have to because I know in my first book that I wrote, Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns, it Goldfield was the biggest chapter. <laughs> well, I'll have to yeah. contact you then because I'm having some, I'm having a little bit of problems with some of the research I'm doing okay. around Goldfield. A lot of the stuff I'm digging up, a lot of the paranormal stuff I've dug up so far appear to be fake. <laughs> Most of it is. A lot of it's yeah. legend, um, it's but yeah. Sad. <laughs> yeah, I, I know the the paranormal team I used to be on when we lived in Vegas, we actually had a branch um, that was in Goldfield. So we had a team of investigators that lived there year round. So, I mean, if I don't have the information or I can't find it, I, I know plenty of people who I can get you in contact with if you need some historical references. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And actually, I'm hoping to get out there next year. So. <laughs> oh, we'll have to we'll have to meet. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because I know we're flying. We're supposed to be flying, and we don't know yet. But we're filming a um, another documentary out there with the documentary crew that we did with um, for Real Haunts, and then um, we're planning on staying probably about another week or so to do some other investigations and do other things that I have planned that hopefully I can announce soon. <laughs> Awesome. I just investigated at Goldfield Hotel recently and Mm -hmm. wow is all I can say about it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That I'm still doing some research on because there's a lot of contradictory stories like Mm -hmm. all about Elizabeth. There's some stories that, you know, and of course the mine shaft where the baby was dropped down. Well, there's no mine shaft in the hotel. It's not. So I've done some research on that Mm -hmm. particular story with some historians. Just it's just over the weekend, actually. And we were able to confirm that story is absolutely false. Yep. It was created in the 80s by the person who bought the hotel because they were trying to draw people to the hotel. as mm-hmm. They were trying to make it into a tourist attraction. Yep. And so they were coming up with all these stories about. And that was like a big mid, that was a big South, Southwest thing at the time mm-hmm. anyway. Yep. Is that people yep. were creating these stories about just anything to get right. tourists to stop in there. And what's weird is because you can, it's almost like they self-manifested this into being real Mm -hmm. spirits now, because when people go there, I know people who've been in there and they've actually made contact with the spirit believed to be Elizabeth in the room that she was in. So it's like, you know, 
and it's people that I trust. It's not something that, you know, oh, just I read a story right. online that someone, you know, had these experiences. So it's like, are we, you know, self-manifesting some of this activity in Goldfield as well? Well, we absolutely are. And a perfect example of that, I'll give you two. One is the Bell Witch Cave. I spent a night in the Bell Witch Cave. Um, that place is absolutely haunted. But when you do the historical research behind it, the cave has nothing to do with the original property at all. There is right. no story right. about a skull and Native Americans or any of that. So mm -hmm. it's just a complete different s story. The actual property was 10 miles down the road mm -hmm. from the cave. But that cave is haunted. And I think it's because of all the people that go in there. And have done ritualistic work and are expecting energy. They're leaving the piece of their own energy in there. Mm -hmm. Another good example of that is um, is with Robert Dadal. Yes. Robert Dadal is not haunted. The mm -hmm. building he's in is haunted, but Robert Dadal himself, not at all. I've, mm -hmm. I've held the doll. I've touched him. I've spent you know a lot of time with that doll. There's nothing, and I've done the historical research on that too. I was going to actually write a book about that, mm -hmm. and the story is not real. I actually contacted um, a relative of his to talk to them. They actually owned the house that um, is now a bed and breakfast. It used to be mm -hmm. Robert's real house. Right. Um, when they, when the guy died, the property was turned, the estate was turned over to another relative and they found the doll in the basement. There's no actual records that this thing was in the attic or any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think yes. it's, <laughs> It's kind of how you, it's all about intent, right? So if you mm -hmm. want to create like a voodoo doll, have a million people put their intent into something. And then right. of course you're going to have a haunted doll. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and I mean, of course people say the same thing about Annabelle and it's, you know, it's like, I look at Annabelle and it's like, okay, I don't feel a thing when I see her. Right. So, and it's, but of course, you know, and I also think that sometimes like with Robert, the doll as an example, people have bad experiences when they feel they disrespected him. And it's like, one of, one of two things come to my mind is, are you self-manifesting your bad experiences yes. or are you trying to blame something for your bad experience? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And how much energy right. are you drawing to yourself to cause that in the first place? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's it's so many so many interesting stories, and like you said, you got to dive deep down into the history of it, you know. Right. And of course, but unfortunately, it's the scary stories that people want to hear. That's what you know. That's I don't really want to use. Yeah, I was going to say I don't really want to use that term, but that is what sells. <laughs> it's Hollywood, <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. And I do want to um, thank Amy for joining us in York. Hello, both of you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I do want to mention, we had talked a little bit about it before we started, but the picture behind you is from Rhyolite, the Goldwell Outdoor Museum. Is that one that you took or is that just something that you put there? Everything that I use in my stuff is everything I've taken. Okay. So what are your <laughs> thoughts on Rhyolite? I actually, I've never been there, but I love hearing historical stories about that and doing different research on the different activity that's there. Oh, Rhyolite is like one of my favorite places. So it's practically in my backyard. Um, it only takes me about maybe 40 minutes to get there. Okay. So I go there all the time and you can hike around the mountains. There's like a mountain range that goes all the way around it. You can hike all through there and I just love it. It's absolutely haunted. Um, I've connected with numerous spirits there and it, they seem to be in the jail area there for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And um, back against the mountains, there's another where I think there used to be houses there. I'm not hundred percent sure. I can't really find the records for it, but when I'm out there, that's what I pick up on is like um, little makeshift uh, houses, not like well-constructed ones, but maybe they were just like miners camps or something mm -hmm. like a whole row of them. Um, I always pick up on a lot of spirits back in that area. Cool, cool. But yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. I've sure. heard so many stories about that. And it's so interesting how, you know, it became a ghost town. Then Paramount came in and revived the city just to make it for, you know, stages, mm -hmm. you know, and sets and everything like that. And I mean, just the uh, the railhouse, the photos of that place is beautiful. The old railway yeah. station. And yes. then the bottle house is one place that I would love to go into. <laughs> you know, the bottle house, I, the numerous times that I've been out there, I have not stepped foot in there for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know okay. why. It's like there's yeah. a blocker or something. I just haven't made my way in there. 
Right. I would just be curious because with all the bottles, I mean, just like when you put up um, like almost like a stained glass look, mm -hmm. what it would look like inside when the sh sun is shining through the bottles. I, I just think that that would be neat. <laughs> I think it'd be really cold, though, in the wintertime and very hot in the summer. But yeah, yeah, that would be the biggest issue. But I mean, the guy may do with what he had. He had a whole bunch of bottles <laughs> from the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one story that I want to bring up about Rhyolite, and it's one of those things where, of course, you find it in one location and then you can't ever find it again. Um, but when I was researching my first book, I found a story that was talking about how one time on it was someone was searching through Google Earth. And of course, Rhyolite's one of the favorite places that people like to find on Google Earth mm -hmm. because the statues from the air look scary. Yeah. <laughs> Just roaming there. But someone said that they had reported seeing it was like glowing eyes coming up from one of the sewers. Ooh. And even though it could be an animal, but they said the eyes were too far apart to be an animal. And, and it's just, what are your thoughts on, I mean, maybe, I mean, of course, there's always explanations on what it could be. But what are your thoughts if it was some type of entity, what it could be lurking in the sewers of Rhyolite? That's very interesting you ask that because um, those lands are actually Shoney lands. Mm -hmm. The Shonies live all along there. And um they have a lot of stories about spiritual entities in the area. So mm -hmm. it could be something connected to the land. It could be something that's connected to them. Um, they're very, they're very spiritual people and they have a lot of these. They believe that uh, Bigfoot, they believe that skinwalkers in the area, they believe um, in a skinwalker is what comes to mind with this particular incident, because they believe that, witches can shape shift into any animal that they desire or need for that particular moment to either connect or create harm or whatever it is. Um, now, if you go out and ask them, if you know Shoni in the area, they won't talk about it, but it, there's a lot of legend surrounding them and they're all over this area. They actually owned Las Vegas. They owned Rylite. They owned just the entire Southwest area in this corner in the Mojave desert was all theirs. Mm -hmm. So it could be something left over from that. <laughs> Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I still, even though I finished that book and it's been put to rest, um, I still try to research that every once in a while, hoping I would find that website again that had that story on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it absolutely could be something that is connected through them. I mean, and there's even photos if you, if you dig through the archives um, the National Archives or the yes. Nevada Archives, I mean, you'll find photos of the Shoney side by side with the miners and stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically when the settlers came in to overtake Rylite or build the town, you know, they were pushing the Native Americans out. They had a choice, either work with the railroad or leave, you know, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? So right. there's no telling. They could have been... <laughs> I mean, think about it. This is 1900s. You got these white settlers coming in, taking your lands. All of a sudden, my kid's 12 and he's working in your mine to make you rich, you know, and yeah. what am I going to do? I'm probably going to put a spirit and I'm well connected with these spiritual entities that's been around in my ancestry for centuries and centuries. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're going to call up stuff and, you know. <laughs> Right, exactly. So that actually, part of that brings up, um, I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on Skinwalker Ranch? I don't know. I, I don't, you know, I've never been out that way, but I've never been out that way. Um, I've heard a lot of stories that it's on ley lines and all mm -hmm. sorts of things though, going on yep. with that place. Yeah, I'm interested to find out what they uncover because I like the fact that they're doing more scientific type research instead mm -hmm. of just the, you know, the ghost hunting, who are you, why are you here type of thing. Yeah. And I know one episode that they had that really intrigued me was they came up with almost like a, they did um, sonic measurements of the ground and it almost looked like a dome shape. So it's like, I'm curious as, you know, my theory automatically goes to, is there, you know, a spaceship buried in the earth that could be attracting all of this, so, you know, but it's, there's so many questions that are still left unanswered, but of course that's what the <laughs> show wants you to do. Oh, yeah, of course. That show was actually really good, though. I did watch a few episodes of it, and they were flying um, a small plane over it and dropping, um, I forget what it was, that they were dropping out of there. But mm -hmm. the theory was is that whatever's in the ground there, there's a shield 
that's so far up it like knocks radars and stuff out. And sure enough, right. it knocked their their plane thing out. But they were trying to track um, what's actually happening with the um, GPS. So I guess they had the trackers on whatever it was they were dropping out of the plane. And when they did that, um, these things were ending up like hundreds of miles off of course with no wind or anything. So something was like some kind of force was moving those away somehow. Yep. Yeah, that's I, I watch the show also to get, you know, different scientific experiment ideas. It's like, ooh, you know, <laughs> and try And now, now it's like trying to find a place to do it at. But yeah, that's it's a very interesting show. And um, of course, not too far from where you're at is also Area 51. Yes, I've been there <laughs> multiple times okay. now. Oh, that place. You know what? I think it I think they have a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. There's a little bar there and. Unfortunately, it's this older woman who lives in Rachel, and she started this bar because of a lot of the workers that work at Area 51. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is they fly in every day. I see their planes. They fly in and out probably three times a day from Vegas. Um, if you ever see a funny looking white plane with a red stripe, that's them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she started the bar for them to go to during the day because, you know, it's out in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing. Right. Um, and she said a few years ago, Coast to Coast AM had a big show about Bob Lazarus and all that stuff broke mm -hmm. out. And there was a big riot that happened. So hundreds of people show up at Area 51 and, and tried to storm the gates and all kinds of silliness happened. But now she won't talk to anybody else or give interviews, but she has a lot of information and I just wish that didn't happen because we could have her on our show. Right. Exactly. And, and yeah. it's almost one of those that it makes you wonder, you know, is she just an average person or does she right. have this high clearance because of the stories she might overhear? It's, it's true. I, we don't know. We'll never know because right. she's, she'll, she refuses to talk to anybody in journalism. Now she won't do any interviews or anything. Hmm. So uh, really, really sad. sad. <laughs> I do know though, um, that area, um, you used to be able to hike. There's like a mountain range around there mm -hmm. too. And you used to be able to hike all the way up over the mountains and look down in there. Well, recently they had purchased all of the BML land all around that. So you can't hike up to it anymore. Mm -hmm. You could still get to two gates legally. Sure. That's still BML land. And that's what I did. I went to both gates. And the one gate, I'm telling you, as soon as you drive up to it, they're there with their guns. <laughs> they're not playing around. They're there. There's not like the fence isn't. Um, there's one gate that doesn't have a fence, mm -hmm. but they're still there. You know, they will right. drive up to you out of they'll come out of nowhere. It's like they just fall out of the sky and they're there. Right. It's, it's like they have cloaking shields and they're following you the whole time. And the minute yeah. you get too close, it's like, OK, time to reveal exactly. ourselves. <laughs> Uh, so, so many, so many stories could come out of there. Cause I know we have, um, we used to investigate a museum that I used to volunteer at in Vegas and they actually have a rail car, um, the engine car that was donated to them from the government from area 51, at least that's oh, wow. what the story was with that. And we always would see a little boy, um, whenever we investigated there, cause we would host investigations as part of a fundraiser for the, the museum. And you know, a whole bunch of different things. Um, we would see him, we would hear him, we'd hear laughter. You take the um, EMF detector around that particular car and it would be off the charts, but then you would go back to the next car, which was from one of the local mines and it would be dead. Nothing would happen. You go back to the Area 51 cart, it's all lighting up. And then you go back to the other one dead again. So it was interesting. And I actually had Catherine Sorilos on my show once and we were talking about that car. And her theory is, is that it's a little boy um, who feels like that cart was his escape. And he was actually an experiment at Area 51. Oh, that you know so, what? There's no telling yeah. what goes on in that I, area. We just exactly. don't know. Right. And that's I mean, something I never even thought of until she brought that up. It's like you mostly think of Area 51 as just aliens. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's a, a lot more to it than aliens. There's a black mailbox there that you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, off yeah. the main highway. There's that little um, black mailbox that's left over from an old ranch or something. It belongs but to the farmer. 
<laughs> yeah, belongs to the farmer. But people put it's so cute. People put little messages in there about um dear aliens, save humanity, and all this like cutesy stuff is in there. Mm-hmm. But um I took a lawn chair and sat there one night just to see if anything goes on. And um sure enough, yeah, they fly planes and stuff around at night mm-hmm. under the cover of darkness, because I guess that's what they're doing. They're creating um warplanes and things like that and you know who knows Mm -hmm. (laughs) but on top of that though there's no telling what else they're doing and you know they're probably working with like radiation they're probably working with um alien technology Mm -hmm. it goes on and on who knows yep yeah and i know um i forgot what we were talking about but on another show that i was being interviewed on we brought up the idea of area 51 and one topic that was mentioned by someone who was watching is that the aliens are no longer there. They've moved them to another like area 51.2 <laughs> that nobody knows. Since so many people found out about this one that they keep it the way it is, is almost like a decoy. That's, well, yeah, that's true. Very true. Mm-hmm. I, you know, what's interesting about area 51 too, is as soon as you get, it's in the middle of a mountain range. Yes. So as soon as you get down in there, almost like a caldera, I guess, as soon as you go over that one mountain, to get into there and then you drive down um if you drive down ex- uh extraterrestrial highway mm-hmm. it's this long stretch and your your cell phone and stuff is dead it's like mm-hmm. blacked out all around it right so you don't have any cell service there's no communication um i know that bar there i don't know how they operate because there's no um service or anything there for internet or anything um, they bring them service. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's like you're cut off from the world and you do it purposely. So they have this right. bubble right over it. Yeah. It's, so you can't call for help. <laughs> yes. You can disappear and they'll never find you for real. Right. Exactly. Really. Or, or it's one of those where you dial 911 thinking you're calling the local sheriff's department, but gets rerouted to them. And they're the <laughs> ones that come. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, uh, So uh, another thing, I know we're kind of hovering over the Nevada area, but since that's kind of closer to where you're at, um, have you ever been to Nelson or El Dorado? No. Oh, yes, I have. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've been to Nelson town too. So Nelson used to be an old ghost town. Mm -hmm. I guess it was washed out in a flood back Mm -hmm. in the whatever that happened. I don't even know when. But now some guy owns it and he put a bunch of like movie set props on there Mm -hmm. and yeah. It's an interesting yeah. place. It, it's really interesting. And when we were there, very haunted. Um, but the history of the land is so interesting because, I mean, the reason why, other reason why I thought of it is because when we were doing, it was Real Hunts Ghost Towns. He was one of the um, featured uh, people in there. And he actually talked about Area 51 and he used to work there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was kind of, you know, that kind of detour to that area. But what I find interesting about the history, and I think it probably happened a lot through the West, is it had its own mini civil war. Because both Northerner and Southern um, deserters all made their way to that area. And then they started fighting against each other once they got there. It's like you left the war. (laughs) But I'm sure that happened in quite a lot of places. I mean, you know, lawless towns, the nearest sheriff was two hours away. He only went if there was a dead body. And even half the time, he didn't even show up for that. (laughs) So I was just kind of wondering, I mean, any other towns that you've researched that might have something similar to that or a history along that line? Uh, Virginia City. Virginia City. Virginia City has a lot of that kind of history too. Yep. Yeah. It's um, it, it's interesting. One, there's another one too. It's kind of off the map. Um, and it's really hard to access. It's Delamar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I spent a couple nights in Delamar now, and that place it it almost scares me. But I dream about this place to go back all the mm-hmm. time. But I've gotten EVPs there. One, I was able to connect with a spirit there who, um, I don't know if she just wanted me to listen to her. I don't know what the deal was, but um, I felt like at that moment that she, she you know, she, she kind of, her husband basically died in a, in one of the mines is what I picked up on. And she had a little girl with her and she was trying to get out of town. So she was trying to collect a paycheck from mm-hmm. the office there. And I guess it was an office. And um, they wouldn't give her the money. So, you know, she just wanted to catch a train to get out. Um, But that was the story. And then 
she just went away. Like I felt like she just moved on. And when I went back to reconnect with her, I heard a thank you. Like I have an EVP that, from her that says thank you mm-hmm. from the same voice. So I don't know. Very, mm-hmm. um, I always, it's a very touching story for me it, that that happened. But at the same time, I've caught in other spirits there that aren't very nice. Mm-hmm. So I've been calling every name under the book. Um, <laughs> one of the EVPs said that they were going to kill me. One of them said that we're not human, just on and on and on with this negative mm-hmm. stuff. I took a friend with me and he was there while I was doing a little film project. And a couple of days later, he said, you know, something followed me home from that place. And then he ends up getting scratched all the way down his arm from an unseen entity. Hmm. Just bizarro. So there's some really not nice spirits hanging out there. Yeah. Yep. And it's, it's tough to know what you're going to encounter, uh, but that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's the field we're in. You just never know. <laughs> Another yep. story about that. I know I keep rambling on and on. I'm so oh, sorry. You're fine. The first time I was in Delamar, um, there's this like dirt old wagon trail to get up to it. So mm-hmm. I was heading down that way and this little Colt stops my car, just came out of nowhere and went right in the road and stopped the car. I got out of the car and, and this little thing, it didn't have a mom or anything. I don't know where its mom was. It was like this little baby horse. And it started like going circles around my car. Like it didn't want me to go forward. And I look to my left or to my right. And there was this little circle of big Joshua trees. And so I went into that circle and there was these dolls. Oh my gosh. It still scares me. I have pictures of them. These mm-hmm. dolls were all mu- mutilated in a perfect circle. There was five of them in this circle. One of them had its eyes gouged out. Another one had a pole shoved up his mom. Just like they were all bound. Their hands were all bound. So there was some kind of like witchcraft or something going on in that area. But this right. is like, this is hours away from any kind of civilization. Mm-hmm. Who would do such a thing? And then next to it was this cow that was, um, its stomach was all carved out. Oh, it was so bizarre. The cow was killed. I think it was in ritualistic stuff. The um, dolls also had some kind of organ um, material in it because it was all covered in bugs. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I took something home with me from that for well over a year. Mm-hmm. Took a while to get rid of that. Right. And creepy in the story. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that would be your next story is to write what could have caused that. <laughs> if you want to go down that road again. Ooh, you just never, you're right though. You never know what you're going to walk into. And that was one of those situations. Yep. Yep. And, um, one other story that I want to talk about, because I also want to talk about kind of your methods of investigating when you do these investigations, but um, the story of in Belmont of Miss Rose, who is kind of like the town's, um, I guess you would say, godmother. She watches over the town and her encounter with um, the Manson family and the possibility that Manson actually haunts the old courthouse there. It's a possibility. You know, a lot of people don't know. Manson hung out in a lot of these areas, him and his family, when they were trying to find a new locale to hide out in. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those places is, um, man, why is the name? Oh, Armagosa. Armagosa mm-hmm. Valley, where that opera house is. Yep. A lot of people don't know. They did stop in there. Uh, they stayed there for several weeks before that owner moved them on. I guess it was an actress who owned the place um, at the time. She moved them on. But, and they tried to stop in several other areas, ghost towns around the area. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, there's a story about him and his family in Death Valley where mm-hmm. it's called the Blue Hole. And it's yep. this, that's a whole other story. I won't <laughs> go into it, but look it up. The Blue Hole, very interesting. Manson and his family used to meditate around that place. Mm-hmm. Almost do almost like magic. I guess they didn't call it that back in the day, but if you think about what they were doing, they were trying to connect spiritually with something else to help him do whatever it was he wanted to do. I don't know. 
Yeah. But yeah. it is, it's possible. Mm -hmm. like, who knows what they were doing? Right. Yeah. Cause I remember in the story with Miss Rose, she actually kicked them out of town and told them to get out. She's like, there's no camping in town. If you want to camp. And she sent them like a couple miles down the road. And then the next day they came back and thanked her and then they were never to be seen again. But then she, uh, I don't, I think it was done more recently, but the story says that then she went back into the courthouse and it had um, Charlie Manson and family with the date. Oh, wow. Etched into the um, door frame. And then she saw the newspaper like several weeks later, realizing who they were. And everyone was like, oh, I can't believe you kicked them out of town, Miss Rose. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still here to tell the story. <laughs> Well, she's not the only one. There's several people who have done this. The, the lady who used to, I can't remember her name. Um, she was the actress that owns the op, the uh, opera house at Armagosa. She did the same thing. She she moved them on because they wanted to stay there. So right, right. yeah, yeah. So so many interesting stories about that. And he even, I don't really want to give him kudos, but he was a smart man. He did his research. Yeah, And he was very curious into a lot of the different religions, not just any one particular religion. You're so absolutely I, right. He, I know even yeah. in, in jail, he joined Scientology for a while. Yes, he did. And he also yeah. did a lot of um, research. I know he, he experimented with uh, the Gateway Program a lot, mm -hmm. which is a remote viewing program through the yeah. government, through Robert Wigner. I've, I've taken that program. Mm -hmm. And... I know he's done a lot of experimentation with that as well. So mm -hmm. he was definitely into the metaphysics and yep. things of that nature. Yeah. Interesting. And you have a cute little friend joining you. <laughs> I did have him walked out. He, get, he got in here. <laughs> That's like, I remember one show we were doing, it was ghost education 101 when it first started years ago, the dog chased the cat through the living room and the cat jumped up on the dining room table. And I like jumped and screamed and <laughs> <laughs> of course my co-host replays that quite often and it's like it's like don't play that one again <laughs> um but anyway we still have about 20 minutes left and i do kind of want to take a shift and talk about more about your investigation techniques you okay. know do you go in with scientific equipment or do you just bring in your digital voice recorder and cameras i mean how exactly do you go about your investigating so i'm a little bit weird and i know a lot of paranormal investigators are just going to balk at this but I'm not out there to prove whether the activity exists or not. I know it exists. I've had many experiences. I grew up with this stuff and it's not my job to prove it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a spiritual journal for, journey that I have on, undertaken for years. Mm -hmm. So the, the equipment that comes with it, I feel like a lot of it's just designed to prove this or that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it I don't use. I use some cameras. I use um, the spirit box. I use a little recorder. And that's pretty much it. I use myself. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do is go into a place blind. I don't like to hear the history or any of that kind of stuff. And then just see what I get and see if there's any spirits I can communicate with on site. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how I do it. And then if, if something shows up in the recordings, fine. If not, it doesn't. Right. Yeah. You, you pretty much do what I do. Um, we go in with non-tech tools because our team, we know, you know, in our minds, it exists. So we yeah. go in with the non-tech tools, you know, dousing rods, pendulums, digital voice recorders and all of that. Um, and, and it's more or less just to kind of have the um, determine if a location is haunted and right. the test. We want to do the non-tech tools in the aspect of testing different ways to communicate with spirits and right. to show exactly. that you don't always have to just have a digital voice recorder. You yes. Know? There are so many different ways out there that you can communicate with them. And, you know, it's like anything else. It's whatever works for you, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. I have done a lot of experimentation with, um, there's a lot of those, um, like the Estes method and all that kind of stuff. I have experimented with that and gotten a lot of uh, really neat results and, and things like that. But for the most part, yeah, I'm really not into the tech side of stuff, mm -hmm. especially the latest equipment that's all come out. I feel like a lot of it works by Siri and, you know, I'm just not right. Into it, yeah. I guess. You, you never know what could happen. And yeah. hold on one second. My son's looking for his name tag. He's getting ready to go to work. <laughs> there, there are socks in the bathroom and your shirt's down there. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> they were trying to do it quietly, but I could hear them over here. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I saw you looking around like, hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, and going into, I'm completely opposite of you when it comes to a location. I, I'm one of the people I want to know. I mean, I don't plan to use any type of psychic abilities, even though people say I have them. Um, I want to go in knowing everything about the history, because to me, that kind of guides me where I need to investigate at, what questions to ask. But everyone else on my team, I mean, they're not here, so I can say it because it's my husband and my son that are my team. They're um, as psychic as a wet noodle. <laughs> 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 so they but they're the ones that go in blind <laughs> so right. it's like complete opposite but i i'm i'm a big history person so i truly absolutely love that that aspect of it but i do agree a, a lot of people it can affect the activity that i get mm -hmm. um and it, it is hard to be like is this happening because i think it's supposed to happen or but i do more of the history not more of the like what people say they experienced yeah so. And see, I try not to listen to any of that. And then once I do go into a place like I just did the Joshua Tree in, mm -hmm. and I know that, you know, there's a lot of um, TV shows about that place that said that, you know, they were possessed and this and that. There's demons living there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't come up with any of that when right. I was in there. It was it's such a comfortable place to be in, mm -hmm. almost like a loving place. There's nothing demonic about this place. It is active, however, but mm -hmm. it's just stuff like that. I don't like to be influenced by what others say. And I, I think people mm -hmm. use the demonic word because it gets them, um, I guess, more likes on Facebook or YouTube. Um, it yeah. makes the stories more interesting. Um, and I don't think it's demonic that they're encountering. I think it's just because they're being total jerks to the spirits and the jerks are, and the spirits are fighting back. So the minute exactly. a spirit gets aggressive, it's demonic and it's not. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it, it's also how somebody perceives the paranormal, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because I remember one time I was attacked and I stood up and I started screaming at this and whatever it was, like out, like it was a two year old child that got in trouble. I'm like, we don't do that. That's not how you treat people. And it stopped. And, and I'm sure if it was a true demon, it would have picked me up and thrown me even harder. Right. And been like, who are you to yell at me? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of it too is it just makes for good TV, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, to me, I feel like that's kind of the problem with paranormal invest. I guess that's why I've been a little bit turned off of paranormal investigations altogether. And it's mm -hmm. because we have all of these teams. I think there's like 44,000 teams out there right now mm -hmm. across the board, which is great. Yeah. I'm not downing any of it. However, we're all going into these famous locations. They never talk about um, private places anymore, like helping mm -hmm. private people that are, you know, have problems. You, you don't hear about that anymore. You hear about Waverly Hills and, you know, all these famous locations. That That's where these, these teams are going to over and over and over again mm -hmm. um, so that they can make their videos and content and, and whatever else they're doing with the information. But at the end of the day, what are we doing? Are we just collecting like massive piles of EVPs? I mean, what's the next step to this? Yeah. Do and, we want and, to communicate with the spirits? I mean. Right. And, and that's where I want this field to go. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we need to do. We need to think forward. I mean, I always yeah. tell people, okay, we know this place is haunted. Move on. Find another place. Or, exactly. you know, we, we know this, you know, this method works. This method doesn't move on and try something else. And that's not what right. people are doing. And yeah. I mean, I know it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but I really want this to be a true science. Mm -hmm. And we're never going to be a true science because there's so many people out there saying, oh, no, it's not a true science. How can it be made? You know, people are so down on it. And it's like it's the closed mindedness to me, I feel, is what's um, stalling the field. Right. I think so, too. And then on top of that, you have a lot of egotism going on. And but you know what? I do see a lot of headways in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've kind of gotten away from the paranormal investigation and I kind of moved into um, more of spiritual contact and metaphysics. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is um, going to IONS in different organizations. And what that is, is they're exploring, it's a bunch of physicians exploring um, like, uh, what is it called? 
out of body experiences mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And you have a lot of MDs coming out and say, and talking about their experiences in the emergency rooms and things. Um, and they're, they're ghost stories mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they're actually working with parapsychologists and stuff mm -hmm. to get more information about this. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole other world in medical that's exploring this stuff that the paranormal investigations they're just missing out because they're not, they're not looking outside of themselves or, you know, they're too into making their YouTube channel and whatever else they're doing, you know, the same thing over and over again. Exactly. Whereas if you get out of that though, and start looking at what's going on in metaphysics right now with these different positions and other people who are working on this stuff, like uh, what's his name? Robert Moody. He's a big mm -hmm. one. He's, yep. he's a physician that's, that's done a lot of, out of body um, encounters and things of that nature. There's a, there's a whole slew of physicians coming out with this stuff, and it's really exciting. Yep. Yeah, it, it is. And uh, real quick, before I mention what I wanted to mention, Mike says he's joining us just for a few minutes, but we will have the replay up later today. So thank you for joining while you can, Mike and Sarah. I agree with this. It's a circle because people want to go to famous places, or it's a circus. <laughs> yeah. It is. It, it has. And it's funny she said that because I was just in a conversation last night with another medium friend and she said it's it's gotten to be such a circus. Mm -hmm. It feels very um, there was a word she used for it. I can't remember it now, but it's relating to how the paranormal field has become very. Um, almost like a Vegas show, you know, right. you've got the best <laughs> EVP. <laughs> And it's, I always used to joke up until, I don't know what happened, but for some reason, I think someone somewhere shared one of my posts and it's like, all of a sudden I blew up to like 1.5 million followers when I had a couple hundred and it was like overnight. So it's like somewhere my thing got, and it's like, I don't even, but it was like, what happened? And I'm like, I just tell people, you know, look, my YouTube channel <laughs> still has 14 followers. <laughs> it's like, I don't do this for the YouTube likes. I do it for, you know, just because right. I like to share information and it's really sad that it's come to the way it is because it's almost like those of us who are serious about the field have to resort to attending some of the conferences that we no normally wouldn't attend like i went to a horror convention the last two years just to get my information out there you and know. that's another thing these conventions there's a they're like mushrooms i'm telling you mm -hmm. a new one pops up every single weekend <laughs> I know. but Carney is the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it becomes so carny. Mm -hmm. And even these, I stopped going to a lot of the paranormal conventions. Like I wanted to go out there too and promote books and things of that mm -hmm. nature. But yeah. I just feel like what's happening is it's becoming about the TV shows. Mm -hmm. So you, the only reason why people go is to watch these people that's been on television. And mm -hmm. that's the whole convention. It's all about these people that's been on the show. I want to know about, I want real talks. I want to know what's a physician's um, remarks on this EVP. I want to know more of the spiritual aspect of it. What's behind some of this investigation? What's mm -hmm. the history? I have, I've asked somebody just recently who's supposed to be an EVP specialist. That's what he calls himself. And I asked him about the seventies, you know, Hans Holzer with EVP work. He had no clue. How are you an expert when you don't even know the history of this stuff? Right. Yeah. How can you even be in ITC with not knowing who Hans Holzer? How can you be a paranormal right. investigator without knowing who he is? Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not downing any of these people. Right. Need to, need to, uh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to down these people. It's just that, come on, guys, let's mm -hmm. be a little bit. You're, you're trying to say you're scientific. Let's do a little bit of research here. Let's let's take it above a show that's mm -hmm. meant for entertainment. Let's let's talk about other things here aside from. Dustin Perry's mm -hmm. hour long show, you know, let's right. talk about something else. Let's talk about mm -hmm. real spiritual aspects of, of the paranormal. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about real research here. Uh, aside from these TV shows, you know, right. I just yeah. wish, it, you know, it would go further with this stuff. Right. It, it's interesting too, because I can't remember who it was, but it was a guest on my show about a month ago. And he had brought up that he went to a convention and was talking to, I don't know if it was someone at the table next to him or someone who came to his table, but he was talking to someone and he had just mentioned, you know, how long have you been in the field? And the guy's like, I've been an active investigator for 25 years. And he's like, okay. So then when he started learning more about this guy, he realized he's only 27. 
He's like, so you've been actively investigating the field since you were two. Wow. <laughs> that, that's different than having experiences since you were two. But right. was, <laughs> it was like, you, you got to compare your, you know, it's one of those things where it's like whoever his PR specialist is, if he has one, or Probably he just not. needs to, he just needs to figure out his age versus how long he's been in the field. Oh, good grief. <laughs> And reward I just feel it. like there's there's so much that we could do with this field and, and we're not because we're so tied up with the TV shows and the entertainment side of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I know two projects that I'm working on. Um, I have one is we just started it um, with some big names in the medical field that have nothing to do with the paranormal field. And we're kind of doing research into um, seizures. And I mean, there's neuroscientists that I reach out to on a regular basis to ask questions regarding seizures and the paranormal and stuff like that. So we're working on that. Um, I don't know. We're talking. There's talks of writing a book on it or even possibly trying to reach out and do it, you know, a one off documentary show on it because we're coming up oh, with some very great. interesting things. I mean, one person that we have that I don't want to call him our subject, but he was the one who brought the idea to me is he never had seizures in his entire life. His first seizure started at 50 when he had his first encounter with what was his great, great grandfather and his great, great grandfather used to have seizures. And now ever since that spiritual encounter, he suffers from seizures. Wow. That's so so we're, interesting. we're trying to connect that. And then um, there's geologists and seismologists that I'm working with um, regarding the Superman theory and how areas with high concentration of crystals are more haunted than others. That's really interesting. I can't wait to see those projects done. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they go where they're supposed to go. But that's what people need to be doing. Think outside the box. Yes. And that's, you know, you know and that's the kind of stuff. I guess that's why I've kind of lost interest with paranormal investigating. And, you know, I don't I don't join groups to do that anymore or any of that kind of stuff. I just yeah. I want to talk about the real deal stuff. I don't want to talk about TV shows. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I feel yeah. like that's what the paranormal field has become. Uh, or it's become it like has. a Friday night, you know. <laughs> A Friday night get together at a haunted location. That's the other part right. of it. And, and that's my thing is I always, I always tell people if you want to be, I call them thrill seekers, I guess you would call them or weekend warriors. If you mm -hmm. want to do that, fine, you know, go do that, go, you know, do whatever you want to do to get the thrill. But they, I don't want to say they need to step aside, but they need to open up the pathway. So people who really want to do this, whether I, I know I get criticized yeah. a lot for it, but I truly believe that anyone who does a residential needs to get licensed insurance and we need to have some type of oversight committee, just like the government, you know, gives doctors licenses. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to go through any classes or anything, but you need to prove to the government that you have X, Y, and Z before you can go help a client. Exactly. Yes. Because and so many clients are, you know, killing themselves, harming themselves because a paranormal team comes in, has no experience whatsoever and says you have a demon, but doesn't realize that this person yeah. is already schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not doing their due diligence. They're just out there trying to create content right. for their channel. Yep. And I've it's seen really that fun. on Facebook groups. Someone will post, hey, we're looking for, a, you know, do you have hauntings in your home? If so, please contact us. We'll come investigate and give you proof that your home is haunted as long as you give us permission to air it live on YouTube. And it's I just I see that. and I'm like, oh, <laughs> what was that? You see a lot of that mediumship, too, nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um I don't know. It's, it's such a turnoff. Like you see a lot of mediums just hanging shingles now to do readings. They have no training, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And people yep. can get yep. really hurt through this. Yep. I mean, think yep. about what you're doing. Yep. You're trying to connect with somebody's loved one who has passed on. This person's totally broken and they're coming to mm -hmm. you for some kind of hope. Right. Right. You can really hurt somebody bad if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's sad. I, I but the, I guess the, needs to be reorganized. We yes. need to have our weekend warriors here, our people who actually <laughs> help people in the home, and then also those that want to advance the field. Exactly. You know, yeah, it, totally it's kind agree. Of where to go. Totally yep. agree. Yeah, and real quick before we go and close out, um, Angela says, good morning. It's the unheard places that I've experienced the most paranormal activity, exactly. She's absolutely right about that. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. And then Mike says he always does research on the property that he's going to. And I, I truly, that's why I like to do research because, oh, that was one story I wanted to bring up and I could bring it up real quick. Um, I don't know if you've heard me talk about, but we were investigating what was um, an old Mormon location. 
And it was more, it would, be, it would have been more of a modern day haunt, but not too old. And one of the investigators had asked, you know, who's our current president? And we received across the spirit box, Jeff's. Oh, and wow. immediately that spirit was like, no, or the, not the spirit, the, um, the investigator was like, no, 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 our current president. It was like, almost like she was giving the spirit a history lesson. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm like, That's what they believe, was, though. right. I'm like, if this is a Mormon location, Mormon settlement, and it might not be Warren Jeffs that they believe is the president when they died, but Rulon Jeffs is possible that, cause they truly thought that their leader was the president of the United mm -hmm. States. <laughs> yeah. And then it opened, I mean, and to me, that was one of my confirmations that I, I should do my research beforehand because no one else in our group knew that, you know, and this was on the other team that I was on, but I was able to pull that out and that took the whole investigation into another, another, another level and everything. That, that is really an interesting EVP though, too. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. And we've gotten it multiple times. We didn't just get it on the spirit box because I still kind of one syllable on the spirit box is kind of questionable. We actually have EVPs throughout that night relating to um, Rulon Jeffs and other members of that during that time period. Wow. So it was it was interesting. And then real quick, Sarah says it's a good idea to have insurance. Yes. I say if you go anywhere, make sure you have insurance if you have a team and you're claiming certain things because it protects you and it also protects the homeowner on that one as well. So we have about three and a half minutes. Do you want to take this time to let everybody know where they can find you and if you have any upcoming projects that you want to announce? I do. I'm actually working on two books and I'm piecing together a new documentary that I'm working on about spirit communication. Um, you can find me at claltomas.org, and I pretty much post everything there. Everything's farmed from that website, but you can connect with me. I'm pretty friendly. I always answer back with email or social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, perfect. And I truly do want to thank you for being on the show. It was a pleasure to finally have you on the show. <laughs> And I will definitely have to reach out and have you on again next year. So I'm working on that schedule now. So I will be contacting you for that to see what new projects you have going on as well. All um, right. It was a pleasure guys, being here. Oh, <laughs> thank you. And if you guys are just joining the show, um, you can catch the replay in just a few minutes. It'll re-loop on Facebook. Or you can go to at Exploring the Paranormal Show and YouTube Heather Lee PhD, where I will upload the um, video in a couple, I would say probably later today. But if not, it'll at least be there tomorrow. And a quick reminder, we have no shows December 19th or 22nd, but we will return January 2nd uh, with special guest Resnick and talk about his ink therapy and a whole bunch of other paranormal experiences that he's had since he's been on the show. So again, thank you for joining the show. Super excited to uh, reading more about the stories that you have and cannot wait to have you on again. <laughs> thank you. And everyone have a great day. <laughs>